All right, happy Wednesday, Game Changers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if Mike didn't say it enough, we're going to say delve. Today's, <laughs> today we're going to delve back into delve and delve some more. I'm never publicly talking again. You know, it's funny. The more you say it like that, the more you're going to catch yourself saying it. Yep. And I'm going to I'm gonna be you know, like, you ever see the meme of somebody sitting at a window just staring out into like a storm or something? Like that's me right now wondering why I'm using the word delve 17 times in three minutes. Well, you have me thinking word. about what I'm going to say and making sure, okay, I do not repeat a word. <laughs> now you will. That's how it works. Today, we are going to explore again. <laughs> That's probably what delve means. Explore again. Little things. We're going to get into little things. Uh, Diana's pick yesterday was my pick. And uh, you want to stick around for Thursday and Friday um, because we have, I think, the producer's pick. And then we have uh, a couple of producers. I don't know. I don't know who so else. So <clears throat> your pick was God Math. Diana's pick was the little things. My pick was get fit which was the um mentally and emotionally st- um getting fit there and then ezra's was identity and labels nice nice so you want to stay tuned to that <clears throat> um so little things was your pick and um this morning i know you were looking at some things and a word popped up in your spirit that you know i think that you know would be a great way to start the discussion today you know listen we we, we really depend on you know, those of you that are watching us live on Facebook or YouTube, comment. You know, um, we're going to get back into the little things discussion. And, you know, we felt like there was a little more on the table, no pun intended. And we want to we wanna talk about that. And so maybe you can share a small thing. Maybe a small thing has happened to you. Maybe you've, you know, maybe you've, maybe God's really given you a revelation of some small things since we've talked about that subject. But Diane, the word grateful. Grateful. Uh, yes, by the way, I am doing <laughs> Starbucks again. Someone says that? <laughs> doing Masani already? Yeah, every Apparently day. I'm a hidden Starbucks lover. Didn't realize it. She's been drinking it every day, do Masani, so just don't let her fool you. Every day for the last couple of weeks. Um, I think the word, something little, you know, and it goes a long way, is being grateful. Um, I think if we are grateful no matter what situation we're facing or even towards somebody. I think it automatically, that little thing about finding something to be grateful changes our heart. It has the ability to change our, you know, our internal. So I think that what's, I don't know what the opposite, the exact word of opposite, but not being grateful a lot of times can cause a poison in our heart that we're entitled maybe, you know, but be grateful in all things, because even if we're facing challenges, you know, God's promise is that he turns all things for our good. So we have to find something that, you know, even if we have to find something little to start our day, to be grateful, like, Hey, today's a new day. Be grateful that you have an opportunity to change the course of, you know, your day to day, you ha- you have the ability to aim it where you want it to go. Or, um, you know, so I think gratefulness, you know, being thankful. I mean, that's always one of those types of things that, um, you know, I'm someone that likes to do things, but, and I don't need to sit here. Thank you. But when someone has the ability or goes back and says, Hey, thank you for that. They're grateful <clears throat> for something little that I've done something, I don't know, insignificant or what you would seem insignificant to say that there's something that it does to you on the inside when someone turns around and says, Hey, thank you for something that rather than feeling like it's your obligation, you know, to do that. So I think gratefulness is a really good start to a little thing that can go a long way to someone. Yeah. You know, I love it. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, the thing, the thing about the, when I think about little things, you know, we talked about this in the series, but I, you know, think about the fact of how it's so opposite. Speaking of opposite of of my personality, you know, it's it's very. This is that was a very. Dip. The reason I didn't pick it is uh, well, we don't really like, you know, so we think we say we do, but we really don't like to challenge ourselves too much because the the little things topic is is really not something that is comes natural to me. You know, I'm a big vision guy. I'm a big picture guy. You know, I see I see, you know, I'm the dreamer and what have you, but. Something I have learned, and I think that when I thought about the little things when we we talked about getting back into this conversation again, it's really hard to not say delve. I'm just letting you know that I've completely avoided that word like five times, Mike. Thanks a lot. I'm not sure what you started here. So... But when I, when I think about that, I, I look at it and I go, you know, I'm such a big picture guy, but what's really grounded me, 
what's helped me immensely in my life, in my business, is, is, is gratefulness and thankfulness. And I think it, what it is, is anytime you want to build something big, we underestimate the power of brick by brick. We underestimate the power of, you know, of uh, day by day, you know, of, of even minute by minute. And I think that that's why we miss. So it's, you know, you're asking for the opposite of gratefulness. And I'm sure there's, there's an antonym and we, we can look that up. But, you know, I said entitled at first. But the reality is I'm not really sure it's malicious a lot of times. I'm, I'm, I, I actually think that we're oblivious to the fact that we're not being grateful. Yeah, I And I think, I think what happens is we just, we just blow over it. It's just, it's, and I think to be grateful, you have to appreciate the day by day. And, you know, it's interesting. One of the reasons or one of the outcomes for me not being naturally gravitate, gravitating naturally towards the little things is I made a lot of mistakes. And if you're not, because if you're just a big picture guy or a big picture gal, you know, and you don't appreciate the little things, what happens, I think, is we can veer off course very easily. You know, our pastor preached a sermon on Foundations uh, Sunday. Just the one part of it is standing out in my mind with that comment. Uh, what is the tower in Italy? Do you remember the tower, the leaning tower? The tower of Pisa. The tower of Pisa. And, you know, he explained explain the backstory of that. And it was, it wasn't built crooked per se, as high as it is at one time. It was built over the course of time. And, you know, it was never corrected. It was never, it was never taken back down and straightened. And so the reality is if it's, if we don't view and we don't learn to be grateful, which requires us to be in the day by day, to be in the moment by moment, the month by month, it requires us to measure you know, our, where we are to, to inspect what we expect, right? Because if we don't do that, then I believe that we'll never see, or it'll take a long time to see the fullness of what God's put in our heart, you know, and, um, I don't know. So I, gratefulness is I think huge. a scripture, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to know to the knowledge of the truth, which is 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, and that was the ESV version. I think that's really important. It says literally it goes supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions. So people that are leading, and we're always leading somebody. We're leading our family. We're leading our peers. We're leading our coworkers. We're leading our our spouses, um, our friends, for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. So I have to tend to believe that something about living in, in supplication, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving leads to peace, peace, which that's what a lot of people are seeking in this world today is peace, right? So you have to have those things to have peace because if you're, in, if you're grateful, you find the ability, have the ability to be at peace, even though things are going crazy around you. So, um, you know, that's just one scripture. Um, I, you know, there's tons of scriptures, even, you know, having a thankful heart coming before the Lord with thanksgiving, you know, so I think that, you know, sometimes even in life, we can be so focused on what isn't right that we forget what is right and what is good. You know, maybe you've had a rough day at work and we forget when we come home, like, hey, you know what, God, you provided me the ability to have a home, have food, have lights, have electricity, you know, God, you know, being thankful, like the people God's put in my arena, you know what, it was a really sucky day, but you know what, I have this coworker that was able to encourage me. So finding something to be grateful, even if it's very small. And I think when you are, have the ability to begin to focus on the small things, being grateful for the small things, all of a sudden you start to recognize the big things that we should be grateful for. Yeah, and, and while you were talking, I had Mike pull up Philippians. This is the message uh, version of Philippians 4, 8, and 9. You know, we hit these on one aspect. We hit these a lot of times, and we've spoken on the, the Scripture many times in a podcast, but mostly from a perspective of speaking life or, you know, getting your mind right. And that's, again, you know, partially this, but Philippians 4, 8, and 9 really has a lot to do if you look at the little things, because it starts with the thinking, because the, where you, how you think, you know, I, I, today, this morning, now, I believe wholeheartedly will dictate the course of your day. 
You know, because, um, you know, if you don't think right, you're going to miss opportunities. If you think wrong, you're going to, you're going to, you know, enter into wrong type of activities and opportunities. And so, uh, Philippians four, eight, and nine in the message said, summing it all up, friends, I'd say to you, to, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds. Now, listen, let me, let me just stop. You got to break the scriptures down sometimes. I mean, in just reading this in the message, seeing this for the first time in this way. How do you fill something that's empty? You fill it piece by piece, moment by moment. I mean, the way you fill your tank, I mean, I don't know about you, but we want something so fast. Like, I get frustrated standing at the gas tank for a long time. Like, I mean, I seriously. Like, I mean. I literally stop every day and put $5 of no, gas in versus spending 10 minutes and filling up your tank. First of all, seriously. partially that is right. The first part is completely wrong. I don't stop every day at all. I just run it to basically about almost empty and then stop. I procrastinate because I don't want to stand there. I that seven, eight minutes bothers me. I want an airplane basically to fly over like the James Bond movies, Matthias, <laughs> drop a hose down, you know, both of us get in sync, pop the hose into the side while I'm driving 100 mile an hour, and then wave at him as he pulls away. I, that's how I, I would wanna... be driving 100 miles an hour, you'd be driving 30. Okay. <laughs> true. <laughs> but my car is faster. Anyway. Oh. This is true. Yeah. Do so, you use it? No, I just need it when I need to. The little things. <laughs> Philippians <laughs> Philippians 4, 8, and 9. I won that one. How about that? Huh? Come on. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds. There's the time it takes, right? The little bit that takes to fill your mind and then meditate. Those are things that take, I believe, step by step, right? And it says meditating on things that are true and noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, nor, not things to curse. And it says, put into practice what you learned from me and what you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God, there's a condition, right? Do this, small things. These are small things because when you want to punch somebody, don't. You know, when you want, when you want to, you know, when you want to get frustrated, don't. When you want to quit, don't. When you want to view how it's, it's not good, right? The big thing is falling apart or whatever, don't. Do the small thing, the next thing in front of you, the gratefulness versus ignoring it or just skating over it. And then the God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. And that's interesting how that ends. He'll work you into his most excellent harmonies. You ever heard like a four, a, a four people sing that are out of harmony? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ever heard four people sing who are in harmony? Yes. Yes. You see the difference even in the answer? Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like there's, that sums it up, right? Four people out of harmony sound like somebody's slinging a bag of cats against the wall. Yes. Right? But the reality is when you get four people in harmony, so God is going to work you into his harmonies, which, which just feels right, doesn't it? Like, wouldn't you want to be in God's harmony today? Like four-part quartet, God's, God's barbershop. God's, say guards. God's barbershop. That was a little tongue twister. The small things. So what do you think about that? I love that scripture. Uh, you know, when I was thinking about small things or being grateful, I, I would say being grateful, you know, I could kind of think about the, pro the story of the prodigal son. You know, he, he demanded it. He went out. And, but even though the other son stayed behind, he really wasn't grateful for what he had. He actually got very, I guess, prideful or entitled when the brother come back like how can you accept him he's already taken his inheritance and 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 so i think you know i guess maybe the opposite of gratefulness would probably be entitlement which i think is really a big thing right now in in the culture right now is everyone feels entitled to a lot of things um but you know, are we, I don't know. I, I, you know, we're not entitled to anything, but I think that the, that's the goodness of God. We're not entitled, but if we do what is right, we, we, we live a right life. He blesses that. So to be grateful, it's not anything that we've done, but it's, you know, all because of him. So, you know, I'm not entitled. You know, I think that's a really big mentality right now is like we're entitled to something, but the truth of the matter is, you know, God's been good to me and he's been gracious and he's been loving and he's been, you know, he's blessed, you know, blessed me in a lot of, even more from a, more than a, than a, um, financial. I mean, we always can, a lot of times we misconstrue blessing to financial. I don't mean that God's blessed me that in spite of things that I've faced or in spite of, you know, he still loved me enough. I mean, you know, another thing I was thinking about this morning was, you know, 
it always says like God found me. I hear stories of testimonies like God found me. No, he didn't find me. He always knew where I was at. I found him. Mm. You know, that's a different perspective. Like I found him. I came to know him. He always knew me. He always knew where I was at. Even before I knew him, he knew me and knew where I was at every part of my life. And looking back, that's kind of a grateful, like he knew, um, in high school, you know, I had friends and obviously in high school, you, you know, you're going to school, you have friends, you have party. There was something about that, you know, that I, I got, I think God preserved me, even though I didn't know him, he preserved me from a lot of things. Um, you know, I have a, an older sister that has taken a road, um, that, you know, into drugs and addictions and things of that nature. And God preserved me. We grew up in the same household, but we made different choices. And I have to believe that there was something I have to be grateful that there are paths that I could have taken, but God preserved me and I'm grateful. Um, you know, and we talked about statistics versus exception that I feel like God called me to be an exception to the statistics of this world. And I have to be grateful because my life story could be totally different. That doesn't mean it's been, you know, all, rainbows and butterflies, right? I've, I've faced challenges and, and there's been times that I've thought, I don't think I'll ever make it. But here's the thing. God always knows, he knows us enough what will keep us going if we stay in tune with him. Um, I've, I've, you know, certain parts of my life, you know, we had two older children. Then Ashton came, you know, five years after our son, seven years after our daughter. And um, we really didn't think we we're going to have any more kids after Austin and Alexis. But here's, I'm, I look back how grateful I am is that God brought Ashton into my life. And I remember, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting ready. But when I was pregnant, I was like, oh, this is not what I need right now. Like, I don't need a, a that's child. What Matthias, that's what Matias has said the last couple of months. He's like, man, this is not but, what I you know, the fact of the matter is I have to look back and see the hand of God and be grateful because he knew, he knew what I would need in that season. And that season in my life was such a very overwhelming season, but he knew me enough to know that I was going to let mother instincts kick in beyond my circumstances. And he gave me a reason to get up in the morning because somebody was dependent on me. And so even though I didn't know I needed Ashton, God knew I needed her. And so she was my reason in that season for getting up because she wasn't going to give herself a bottle. She wasn't going to change her diaper. I had to do those things. So the Lord knew me enough, which is interesting enough to me, fast forward, um, you know, 15 years later, and then Alexis got married and then Austin moved in. Our son, Austin moved into the dorm. They left, like Alexis got married in May. Austin moved into the dorm that fall. And I would have lost both of them at the same, I don't mean lost, but they would have moved on to a different season of their life. They would have left home at the same time. And God knew I had Ashton behind. So I didn't feel the transition of both of them <clears throat> leaving at the same time. So God knew when he brought her in my life, I needed her to get up. But he also knew 15 years later, I was going to need her to be able to like, so that wasn't letting go of two children at the same time that I still had one. And then that time with Ashton, God used that time. I have to be grateful um, because her, her childhood was a lot of times spent chasing her siblings. Like we were always running to the next practice or the next soccer game or whatever. So when she was little, it wasn't really about her. I spent time with her, but I mean, her, the, her life was encompassed around what they were plugged into. And then there was this sweet season that it was just her and I. And so what we didn't have in the beginning, God gave us that one-on-one -on -one time, you know, as she got older and the older kids left, but God knew. So I have to be grateful that even though when she, I found out I was expecting, I was like, Ugh. I had to be grateful because God knew what I needed. And that's interesting that God knows what we need when we need it. And he also knows 15 years later what I will need. And it was her again. So that's kind of interesting. interesting. Did you okay. guys, re did you remember that when you two were wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> Ashton and I do have yeah. strong personalities together. No, yeah. not the two of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was just funny. I just remember, like, I just remember in the last couple of years because <laughs> they're button heads. I saw them go WWE, baby. They were like, <laughs> you know, like going around and around. It was funny. Anyway. They it's love each other. Funny. It was it was really funny. I was sitting there watching. Like I was about to get some popcorn, <laughs> just watching it because it was just funny watching them. There was a comment that came in a little earlier uh, from Alvaro. It says, "There's one thing Jesus did several times before performing miracles, and it was giving thanks. Before he resurrected Lazarus, he gave thanks, and before feeding the multitude, he gave thanks." Mm. Say that again, Mike. There's one thing Jesus did several times before performing miracles, and that was he gave thanks. Before he resurrected Lazarus, resurrected Lazarus, he gave thanks. Before feeding the multitudes, he gave thanks. 
That's a great comment. Thank you, uh, Avaro. Uh, you know, um, yeah, think about that for a second. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about we're talking about the King of Kings. You know, and interesting he says that because in Luke 11 when he, when he raised Lazarus, you know, both of those times Jesus didn't need to do that. He actually said at one point, he said, I'm doing this so that they will believe you. And um, because I mean, he was Jesus, but what he was doing, I believe, is, is patterning, setting a pattern for you and I. And because he went on to say, greater things will we do. It's interesting th- that he chooses a small thing that we sometimes pass over giving thanks. But then he goes on to say, greater things will you do. In yeah. other words, the key to the big things are the small things. I, you got you to gotta get that. You got to get that. Because the key to the greater things are the small things. The key to the big things are the small things. And if you, if you think about that, we were, you know, we were watching uh, some show on Netflix the other day. I can't remember what it was. And, and, but, they, but there was a key. And the key, you know, the key is so small. And it was one small piece of the puzzle that was, that was hidden. But here it is. This key opened up, you know, something greater. And it, was, and it fits in such a small place. You know, it, 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 it goes in, it goes in, it's seemingly so insignificant, but the key to the bigger or the greater things are the small things. Well, it's being grateful in whatever season we are in, knowing that even if it's a tough season, he turns it for our good. Someone put a comment in there, and I'm sorry, I can't remember. I think it was Alyssa Harvey. Um, you know, the song that Steffi, uh, Stephanie Gretzer sings is You Know Me, He Knows Us. I love this song. Is that the one that we, this really slow song, kind of Bethel? Oh, yeah, that song's good. Um, so he knows us. Here's the thing. If we can, if we can find a way to give thanks in the smallest of areas, I think it changes our focus and allows us to not be more focused on, you know, what's not right. If we can put our focus on what is, what is right, the little things that are right, I think it allows us to, to not, maybe the bad things aren't as big as we're making them. Maybe they're just, maybe there's something in a shadow. You know, if you, if I put this pin up and I shine light in its shadows, it looks bigger than it really is. Well, so I think if we can get our eyes focused on it, being <laughs> grateful, maybe the things that we think are big things really aren't as big as we think. Well, they're not as, they're not as final. They're not as that's final. That, that's, I think that's the way to look at it. They're not as final. You, the, the enemy, I, I, I believe this wholeheartedly, you know, a cartoon watcher from childhood. You know what I mean? I remember like the, I'm talking Looney Tunes. Still. And, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Tom and Jerry, I just don't watch them that often. I still like them. I just now use Adley as an excuse <laughs> to watch cartoons. And she's yeah. like, mm-mm. She's like, yeah, I don't want to watch that one. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> All she wants to watch, Mickey Mouse. But I want to watch like Tom and Jerry. I want to teach her that. But anyway, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, those, you know, and it was funny because of a story that it, constantly, I mean, re- re- repetitively over the course of my childhood. I can't tell you if it was once, it was a thousand times that there was an oasis scene, you know, where you have like whatever characters they're walking in the desert and they're, they're parched, right? Their tongues are hanging out of their mouth and they think they see an oasis off to the end. What do they do? They run towards it. They dive in the air. What happens, Mike? It and disappears. It's gone. And then boom, they hit the ground. And you know, I think that the enemy the enemy use the enemy uses smoke and mirrors. I mean, just keep in mind that the enemy has lost the big thing. The big battle is over. Jesus said it's finished. And so I think that what happens, Diana said it right. We we view we we see the big thing as is is final. We see this and it seems overwhelming, but the reality is it's so big, it can't be final. It's, it's, it's the journey. It's, it's the overall. And we're so, we're, we think it's f- more fragile than it really is. And the reality is it's the small things, the day-to-day things that really matter. You know, I'm kind of thinking of on a shoreline <clears throat> where water kind of comes in and just slowly erodes rough edges. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's kind of think about if we allow our gratitude to slowly erode our rough edges. Mm. You know, I, that's, I, I don't know. That's kind of a picture in my mind. Like, it, it's just something that will slowly change our Let's practice. Heart. Let's role play. Tell me how grateful you are. I mean, like, <laughs> just ro- <clears throat> let's, ro- let's give them an example to apply. Go ahead. Just try. Okay. I'm listening. I'll role play. I'll be the person that receives the gratefulness. Go ahead. How, go ahead. You can't Hi. do that. How are you this morning? <laughs> role play with me. Just, 
No? I'm not good at that. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot. I'm so grateful for you, David. Thank you, babe. I really appreciate that. I, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I receive your gratefulness. Look at it eroding away all of the, the, the non-affirmation. You affirmed, you affirmed me there. Thank you. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just demolished your point. <laughs> go ahead. I have nowhere to go. Your turn. You said it was slowly eroding away. You said, so but go ahead. Finish that point. You know what? Being grateful will slowly erode a hardened heart. Mm. Where you feel like, you know, you can be grateful even when someone's not treating you properly. Be grateful that they're there. You know, now I'm not saying, let me make that clear. I'm not anything about, you know, abuse of any sort. But, you know, sometimes in relationships we can be resentful of what we're not getting, um, and which can harden our hearts. But I guess if we can find a way to begin to soften it and be thankful for what we can be thankful, that will erode the hardness to be able to open up and allow healing and repair and restoration. And that can be in any type of relationship. Um, you know, families, situations, you know, spouses, boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, even a boss, you know, sometimes we can allow, um, people's challenges to help us better. So sometimes people are giving us advice because they see better and, and making us, um, you know, to help refine us, right? So we give advice like, hey, why don't you try it this way? And instead of getting resentful, be grateful you have someone that cares enough to, to help you get better. That will change versus, oh, this boss is always on my back which hardens your heart from even being able to receive good advice or good help or something that's going to make you grow. So if we allow, you know, be grateful that you have someone that cares enough, it'll erode those sharp corners and allow us to be open to receive from that person. Mm. Well, there we have it. We just delved all the way into little things, Mike. Come on. That was a good, that was good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you all for listening today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As we go into extra credit, the rest of the week we'll be delving back in. Oh my gosh, I just said it. I got it. I'm literally going to rid myself. I'm mentally going to torture myself to get rid of that word out of my vocabulary. We are going to keep diving into a couple more of our previous podcast series. Tomorrow, we are going to go into get fit on emotionally and mentally fit, as well as Friday, we are going to go into identity and labels. Thank you all for tuning in today. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, podcast this morning. Hope you guys are enjoying this week. Um, If you guys want, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning that you can opt into. You can text the letters EZGC to 813. 5223356. It is completely free. It doesn't cost a thing. It's a free little text message you can get every single morning from Dave just to help pick up your day. To everybody that's on our live audiences, both on Facebook and YouTube, you all being with us every morning means the world to us. Your your comments, your laughter, you know, the affirmation that, you know, things that are being said is like apl- applicable to your life. I can't talk this morning and I got to get out of here. Um, it's applicable to your lives. It's great for us to see. It helps. It kind of uplifts us to know that what we're doing, we're doing the right way and we're doing it well. So to all of our live audience, thank you. But if you happen to not be able to make it to the live stream, you can always catch us on your favorite podcasting platform, audio source, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or you can also catch the replay on YouTube every single day at 12 o'clock. To everybody who's listening either on a replay or is listening on any of our audio platforms, you guys can join us every single morning on Facebook and YouTube live at 8.30 a.m. EST. If you want to be a part of the live conversation, join in. Just search David Villa Game Changer and you will find us. Summer 21 Drop is out on faithgear.co. Please go check it out. Grab it while you can. Once supplies are out, it's going to be at least three weeks before we get anything back in. So if you want it, grab it. Hold fast. Our newest Bible plan is out. It's live. It went live on Wednesday. Um, you can go get, check it out on the Bible app, Bible.com, version, however you guys want to find it. But you can actually just search David Villa version, and it should come up under our site. and It'll take you right to the plan. But it's Hold Fast. It's a five-day plan. Go check it out. We did a series not too long ago based around that. So if you guys want, um, I will pop a link into the notes um, for the audio platform as well as um, like which series was tied into it so you can kind of listen along. But thank you all for listening. We will see you guys tomorrow bright and early. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And on that note, we out.